Money Monday. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to talk about one thing and one thing only, depreciation. Did I spell depreciation right? Depreciation, it's a very interesting thing to observe. It's a very interesting thing to try to avoid because when you avoid this, it puts more money into your pocket. We're not going to talk about business depreciation. We're gonna talk more about in context of a consumer. What is depreciation? I'm gonna use this as an example right here. Garmin, it's a GPS. Before smartphones came out, you might remember that these were all over cars. Say you didn't have it built into your system. You didn't drive a Lexus or an Audi or whatever that had a GPS. You would get one of these external units. They would cost anywhere between 100, maybe 200, maybe even more than that. Nowadays, they still kind of cost that much and it's getting worth less and less and less money every year that it goes by. Uh, even on the secondhand market, it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Most of the time, you're not gonna be able to get that MSRP price back. And because these were replaced with smartphones, even now, they don't retain their value that much. This Nuvi 56 LM was about $150 a couple of years ago, and now it's worth about 30 bucks. It has depreciated, it has depreciated. Whoever initially purchased that lost a good amount of money. And that's just an example of depreciation. Obviously it's going to vary depending on each specific product, but it essentially is MSRP worth less, worth less as time. We could draw a graph for this. So time, price, depending on the item, the graph will be slightly different, but it's going to start at the MSRP and it's going to go kind of sharply off and then it'll kind of even out over time. This is obviously not for every product, but it's a very bird's eye generalization of depreciation. We're gonna talk about things that depreciate. Number one we're gonna talk about is vehicles. You've probably heard you drive it off the lot, you lose a certain amount of money. I got some statistics from carfax.com. Those statistics are an average of 10% loss of value in the first month, you're gonna lose 20% or more in the first 12 months, so that's the first year. Every year after that, you're going to lose about 10%, meaning that if you do the math, after five years, you're gonna be paying about 40% of that MSRP for the car that was purchased new. So if the car was $20,000, after the first month, it's gonna be worth about $18,000. After the first year, it's gonna be worth about $16,000 or less. And then after five years, that $20,000 car is now about an $8,000 car. You have the choice as a consumer to be the person that takes this depreciation or to be the person that scoops up these deals on older things that have already gotten hit by the depreciation. Vehicles are constantly being produced. They're not in a short supply. The inherent value of the vehicle of like a person transporter is going to depreciate based on newness because there's not, there's not a short supply. Everybody has access to vehicles. You can go out to a dealership and buy one. You can get one used. The specific models and utility, yes, but generally, vehicles in general are going to be depreciating. Of course, you can get into your classics and whatnot. That's a different video. That's a different argument. In general, be the guy who scoops up the deal. Five-year-old car, clean car, already got depreciated. And then it's only going to depreciate a lot less after this $8,000. It's going to go down a lot slower and put that $12,000 in your pocket. Or you can go buy it new and pay for the overhead. You can pay for the dealer fees. You can pay that extra tax. You can pay for that new car smell and you can pay that $12,000 over five years if you don't want that in your pocket. Cars depreciate like crazy. Another thing that's a crazy amount of depreciation is consumer electronics. And again, super, certain electronics depreciate less than others. What we're gonna talk about right now is we're going to talk about smartphones. I pulled some data. Right now you can get a iPhone XS normal 64 gigabytes from the Apple store, you're gonna be paying 999 and 99 cents plus tax. 
So wherever you live, that might end up being closer to uh, $1,100 or 1050 bucks or whatever. But that's your brand new price, so that's new. We're going to take a look at the market of it not being new, of what it is used. The average sold on Swappa was $849. That was this month. And eBay, the average sold for this type of model was $636. And this phone just came out in what, October, November? So it's a very new phone, but if you got it new, you could s try to sell it on Swappa and get around 850 bucks, but most people would be going to eBay. You're gonna get hit with fees from both of these sites. So that's gonna bring to Swappa about I mean, an immediate 20% depreciation, and then eBay, is about an immediate 40% depreciation by opening and using that iPhone. So you could choose to find one that's already had been depreciated, or you can choose to go with the brand new phone, that whole unboxing experience, an extra 20 or 40% from the used market. So that was just my example of the electronics depreciation. Another example would be jewelry. You're paying for like an emotion thing for the whole diamond is forever. In my opinion, it's the whole diamond thing is a complete marketing scam. It's a controlled supply and demand and it's a lot of advertising and brainwashing, but jewelry in general is different than raw metals because there is a certain amount of craftsmanship involved, but it does depreciate if you go to a new place and buy it versus if you go to a used place and buy it, um, there's a nice gap in depreciation, especially on like engagement rings. So you might buy an engagement ring for $20,000. It might actually be worth like, I don't know, eight, five to $8,000, something like that, or it was what a, a pawn shop would sell it for. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of jewelry. Of course, certain pieces are going to not depreciate. Maybe Cartier, Tiffany isn't going to depreciate as much as the whole category in general, you need to do your specific research on pieces. One way to protect yourself is finding a reputable used jewelry dealer and going that route or not wearing any jewelry at all, I guess, <laughs> if you don't want to be flashy. Video games depreciate pretty, pretty bad, especially the sports games that are in, in production every year. They will be sold for $60 and then maybe they're worth $10 the next year or $20 the next year, depending. But uh, video games depreciate pretty bad over a couple of years until they hit classic status. That's a, that's a whole different topic as well. Uh, one another one I want to talk about is clothing. Clothing depreciates a lot. Okay, for an example, we're going to go to the Polo store in the mall. If you go to the Polo Ralph Lauren store, that's going to be what, like $69 or $89 for a polo, something like that, something crazy plus tax. You could wear that polo for three months and try to sell it, and you're probably going to get anywhere between $10 to maybe $25 for that same polo after three months. If that doesn't put it into perspective of depreciation of clothing, I don't know what would. Again, it's specific to a style or a piece or a material or a brand as well, but in general, the MSRP, they're getting you. They're getting you bad at each piece of clothing that they're producing for pennies on the dollar and selling it to you for $89 or $69. You're really paying for that whole experience to go into their store and smell the perfumes and to be taken care of by the salespeople to try it on, to get the exact color, the exact size that you want. That's really the luxury that you're paying for, the convenience, rather than um, seeking out the item yourself, maybe a used one, or even at a Marshalls or a, or a TJ Maxx, you could, you could kind of mitigate some of that depreciation right there just by going to a Ross, Marshall, or, or TJ Maxx and getting the same shirt, especially if it's just in a a solid color, you could probably get it for half price, maybe even a third price, still brand new, and not get hit as much with the depreciation. Hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of money getting pretty much given away in the clothing, the soft goods, the textile sector every year. This is just one perspective or observation of this whole depreciation game. 
you could keep this polo in your closet for 10 years and enjoy it a lot. And to you, maybe that value is the 69 or $89. To some people that are hyper savers and really want to get financially free, it's something that you're going to want to think about. And the last but not least, things that depreciate not as bad as other things. Number one is guns, hunting rifles, pistols, whatever. Guns, for whatever reason, the utility of them, they do not depreciate as much as other goods. Tools also do not depreciate a whole lot as much as other sectors of MSRP, MSRP things because they have their own inherent value of a specific purpose that it can only fulfill maybe a certain type of wrench or a craft has a crafting fixing value to it that other goods might not have. Camera lenses do not depreciate as bad as other electronics, a lot because they are interchangeable with different bodies and they don't get updated that often. They definitely hold their value more so than the latest phone would or other yearly cycled electronics, computers, laptops, desktops, whatever. Camera lenses, for whatever reason, hold their value a little bit better than other consumer electronics. When we're, we're gonna get into clothing, there's certain types of clothing that don't depreciate as much. Uh, Patagonia holds its value pretty well compared to other brands. You usually can sell, you're usually gonna be able to sell it for 50% or more than you paid for it, which you cannot say about a lot of brands. They, it just doesn't get hit as much for depreciation. Just, it's crazy that they, how, how well they hold their value. Uh, it's quality, they put insurance, basically insurance on their clothing with the repair abilities. They make really good stuff, I really like it. Another one is Lululemon, maybe because it's super trendy right now, but they also hold their value pretty well you can usually sell them used for probably, I'd say about 50% or more than you paid for it, depending of course on styles and colors and whatnot. That doesn't, de it still depreciates, it just doesn't depreciate as much as like Nike or Adidas or most other Under Armour brands. Another one would be CC Filson. That would be another example of one that doesn't depreciate as much. Obviously this is not an all encompassing list. This is just stuff that I'm throwing out there off the top of my head to kind of try to make you think. And the big takeaway here is try not to get hit at MSRP. If you have to have new clothing, just look at eBay new with tags, Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or just get something like really on sale and stack it with coupons or something. It's really coming down to buying uh, new versus used. That's really what it comes down to. If you're getting into a crazy hyper saving mode and you really want to uh, save money and grow your wealth at a uh, higher rate than what you're currently doing, it's really the whole getting overused versus buying new and letting somebody else take that hit on the depreciation. Uh, I do thank everybody for watching. If you have a, a comment about depreciation or another example of something that depreciates crazy fast or very slow or holds its value very well. I'll be very thankful to continue the conversation in the comment section below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. I will talk to you guys in the next video. I will be putting out some more content this week, maybe some vlogs, maybe some unboxings for Mercari. You're not, uh, maybe some Goodwill hauls. Uh, thank you all again for watching and I will talk to you in the, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.